Welcome to the M3 Bear Essentials. My name is Malcolm Travers. In this episode, we continue our conversation about the most recent police shootings and discuss why people would deny the existence of white privilege. Anyway, um, I want to give everyone else a chance to uh, weigh in on this. We also have a QA. and a uh, Nate James says, I don't feel like I am being racist when I say this, but in America, the U.S. freedom and justice to all to to for all rich white people, everyone else gets injustice, exploitation, high blood pressure pills. Yeah, I know one thing is um, one of my issues has been the there was a, a poll not too long ago of people who are just uh, I guess Americans not accepting the fact that racism is a real thing. Um, you know, they do polls and um, that's something like a bigger issue even beyond like. Um, police misconduct and, and these sort of issues. You, know, you make a valid point though about the acknowledgement of racism and the fact that it did exist in this country because a lot of people were like this Facebook live function I know right now the government is really really mad Facebook came up with this yeah. because people are using it and uh, the protests that were going on I know here in Atlanta people were streaming everything that was being done with the interaction with the policemen, the marching and everything but you saw a steady flow of comments also that were going on and right. a lot of them that were coming from people that really were, I mean, what they were saying, they, they weren't black. And they were saying things like, oh, y'all are making a bunch of noise and disturbing traffic and da 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 da. And one even guy said, oh, I'd rather be fishing right now. So it is a thing of, I mean, because um, Elizabeth Warren did a, um, a speech about two years ago around race and racism. And one of the things she said is she acknowledged that the white woman, she said, I have benefited from white privilege and I know that. Right. And if, 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 if people are not going to be enlightened enough to have that basic of a conversation and be that honest, then we are going to continue to see, I think, a lot of the negative stuff that we're seeing flow out of this and not any real proactive dialogue. Yeah. Um, I've, had that, I've had that white privilege uh, conversation more than once. And it's always, it's funny because it always starts out the same. Um, I make a comment about white privilege and the first response is there is no such thing as white privilege. I have worked for oh, everything shit. that I have. <laughs> I don't know what the I hell have, they talk about. I have worked hard for everything that I have. Okay, you have. <laughs> I'm not saying you haven't. I'm saying that the road has been much easier for you. Yeah, I know one thing, um, and I'm, I'll give um, you guys a chance to talk, but um, they said this is the definition of white privilege, and they showed a picture of a man actually resisting arrest and the police... Yeah. I've you know, seen... I've seen that video, and the guy was assaulting the police, fighting them back, mm-hmm. and then all they were doing was tasing him and, and right. trying to, you know, physically take him down. Right. Versus, it was a black person. The first thing they were gonna do was pull out, pull out a gun and put a bullet in them. Right. This is the definition of white privilege. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was a guy shooting at the police yeah. uh, exactly. a, couple days, a couple days ago. A white guy shooting at the police, and they took him in alive. Right. Right. <laughs> Yeah. But, yeah you know, um, so, um, but I wanted to say this because Xavier uh, mentioned this earlier about scaring the police. Mm. Yes, it, I, I'm not. I'm not making myself special above anyone else because we are all black men. We are all facing the same thing, dude. I'm six foot five. The police are already scared of me. No matter what the fuck I do, if I'm wearing a fucking diaper, <laughs> then the police are fucking scared of me. You know, any fucking confrontation with the police could end with me three to the chest. Right. You know, for, for for no reason other than the fact that I'm a giant. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, you can you can try to de-escalate that situation, and it really just it really just does depend on what officer you run into that day. Yes, I, I I I know police officers. I have I have friends that are police officers. I have friends that have retired from the. Um, from the force, mm-hmm. you know, and I have run into a few, you know, racist cops. I've run into a few black racist cops, which is oh, even yeah. worse. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's a, pr- ugh. <laughs> and you can't even, and you can't even do the, you can't even do the whole, you safe in your house business anymore. Cause let me tell you, when I lived in Baltimore, whoever lived in the apartment before me, had some kind of criminal record, a criminal network or whatever, because every three months for a year, the the people would show up at my door <laughs> looking for somebody. Oh, and wow. they were never kind. Right. You know, they came in, you had to let them in. Um, they were searching the house and everything. Well, who lives here? I mean, you're automatically a suspect. Right. 
And, you know, when they were done, I asked them one day, I said, look, so how do I keep you motherfuckers from coming back in my house again? Because mm. those people that you're looking for, they don't live here. And every time you come back, they're still not here. Yeah. You know, and what's your name, by the way? Because you were kind of a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of the things I think um, I agree with Xavier on the the idea of not escalating something because you can't you can't control anyone else's actions. You can only control your own. Yes. And Ooh. so, you know, you can just be unlucky and meet that one racist cop who's just got it in for you. But you can't control yourself. And I think all of those tips are, are good to have, like, you know, visible hands, controlling your emotions as best as possible, complying with their orders, uh, being polite. I mean, I remember seeing this one video of a guy who just was following the rules, but at this, the whole time he's being sarcastic and just kind of being a dick. And, you know, there are people, too. Like, um, I even take it out of the realm of, you know, a violent escalation of police officers, but let's say just any sort of public service um, situation, like ordering at a restaurant or something. You get better service when you're polite. Just saying. Like, it's not even a – like, you might end up with a, a racist waiter, you know. I guarantee you, you get better service nine times out of ten if you're just polite to them. So, um, so and, and I also, but I, and I also want to say this last point. Yeah. All cops that shoot black men are not per se racist. Um, do they have some? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, do they have some prejudices? Yes. Have they been programmed that way? Yes. There was a man that got killed here uh, in New York a couple of years ago. Um, he was in his building, in the stairwell, and apparently one of the cops was checking out the stairwell, and why he was in the stairwell with his weapon drawn, nobody knows. But the lights were off, he heard somebody coming up the stairs, this man was coming up the stairs with groceries, and he just shot in the dark. Yeah. The cop just shot it. It was a black man coming. He shot in the dark because he had been so freaked out and terrorized by his fellow police officers that when you're in these buildings, these animals are all out to get you. Yeah. Well, and I think, I mean, that goes back to the earlier conversation. I mean, because although, like I talked about with us as a culture, the fight or flight thing, we have to realize that it's a natural instinct that happens in everybody. And so, yeah, like you said, every cop that might shoot somebody, um, when fight or flight kicks, kicks in, self-preservation is the number one rule of nature. So they are going to respond, and if they happen to be the one that has a gun, and they're on the other end of that, and they shoot somebody, I mean, it, like you said, it doesn't automatically scream racist. It just screams, hey, it was a survival thing, and it was either me or them. And yeah. I know I've heard cops say that. And I mean, and I agree, like, I mean, and when I would say one of the things about seeing the video from Minnesota, which I thought was very interesting, was when we talk about de-escalation, um, I, I commend that woman for what she did because even though her boyfriend laid there dying next to her, she thought about the fact that her child was in that backseat. And even though that cop, I mean, he was cussing at her. He was, I mean, he was actually like, he even after the shooting, he was just so amped up. And she kept saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I hear you. Yes, sir. I mean, and, and she did everything in her power to de-escalate that situation and let them know, hey, I'm not a threat because she understood she was a mother. And yeah, she did not break down until she got into the back of that police car. And for her four-year-old daughter to have to be the one to comfort her in a situation like that was heartbreaking. I mean, mm -hmm. it literally brought me to tears. That's why I said I had to stop it because I was like, I can't watch anymore. Because that – and, and, and I, people can say whatever they want to say about her, but at the end of the day, she did exactly the right thing in the sense of even though, yeah, she had her phone on, but she was very compliant. I got my hands up. I'm not moving. Like, I'm not going to give you an excuse to shoot me even though – this man is laying here dying next to me. But yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, like I said, I mean, fight or flight is a very real response and it kicks in and for cops, you know, they're just other people sometimes. And, and I mean, we need to, and, 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 and Jeffrey, we need to remember that on the other end, Tim Wise wrote a very good piece about, um, he said, when, when these things happen and you know, people yell, well, why was he resisting? He should not be resisting. When someone grabs you, when someone mm -hmm. cuts off your air supply, your natural response is fight or flight. You cannot ask someone to go into full cognitive thought when their airway is, you know, when their airway is cut off because your arm is around their throat or your foot is on their neck. Yeah, exactly. You know, so yes, the body naturally is going to fight back. The body wants to breathe. Yeah. So we have to remember that only you are absolutely correct. The cops have a fight or flight, but so does everybody else. Exactly. I was having a conversation with one of my coworkers, and we were talking about the um, cop that got killed in Texas. Yeah. And I said, I don't condone it, but at some point, somebody had to know that 
it was going to happen because these cops were getting off with no indictment. They were basically getting, basically getting away with murder. And somebody was eventually going to snap and say enough is enough and take the law into their own hands. I don't condone it, but I'm surprised. Well, I'm, I'm, well not surprised, but I'm just like, and nobody knew that something possibly like this could happen. I think they did, but I, I think there's something to go back to what Xavier said about the halo effect. I think a lot of people, um, they're going to take the you know the negative aspects of this one person yeah. and put it on everybody yeah. who wears the uniform. And I think that's kind of what we saw happen there. Which is yeah. interesting because that never happens the other way around. U.S. soil and the police, because we talked about the because Xavier mentioned the militarization of the police. The, the, the and I've talked before about the police getting all the military toys. Uh, they used a drone. They used a robot mm -hmm. to blow a man to blow a man up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to talk about that. Uh, okay, all right. No, no, we can talk about it now because I, I just that's, put it in there. Uh, it was the, the first. It was the first time that lethal force has been used by a robot. Yeah. Um, in the US. They, those robots are typically used to disarm. Bomb. Right. This is the first time they use it on a person. Yeah. That, and there was, that, that was some deep shit right there. Yeah, and it was one of those things where it's not an autonomous robot. There was somebody. Um, controlling it, but it definitely yeah. got like ethicists and um, yeah, yeah, law enforcement like pause for a second, like you hmm? robots, <laughs> right? <laughs> Killer robots, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's no different than a drone when yeah, they said exactly. drones overseas and that's what I'm saying. In the U.S., we've yet to use you know. <laughs> we've yet to use drones in the U.S. But yeah, we've been using drones for about ten years now. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, killer robots are a thing. <laughs> I was telling people, I think I was having that conversation with somebody. Oh, like, no, no, we we're already have it. On the own, we good. <laughs> so, we're in the middle of the Terminator now. Okay. <laughs> they kind of are, yeah. They just fly. They don't look like human beings. Why they don't transform? <laughs> well, that's right. They're not androids. They don't look like this. Right. But they're still robots. And some of those drones are autonomous. Like, they literally can fly themselves, mm -hmm. hit a target, and come back to base without any human interaction. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that exists. I'm about to say, I've just kind of been watching the events of this week and just kind of trying to avoid discussing them whatsoever, even when patients try to bring them up. When they, if the first thing they come to me with is something about the, the Dallas police, I really don't have much to say about, um, other than it's, it's bad when anybody anybody's lives are taken. And that's, that's pretty much it, especially when it's um like the Orlando people. If you didn't say anything to me about Orlando people, you know, I don't really want to hear you say anything, anything to me about Dallas police officers or um, even Black Lives Matter. If you're if you're a heterosexual black person, all you have to do is say something about Black Lives Matter. Matters. I don't even really have much to say other than, uh, you know, <clears throat> anytime anybody dies is a bad thing, whether they're gay, whether they're black, or whether they're police officers. So, yeah. I thought one of the things I was going to bring up is the idea of other police videos popping up on my newsfeed. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Like, there's I, like I, 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 yeah. kind of, at this point, I haven't even been watching all of them. That's yeah. just me. Because I, I noticed that too. Like some videos that are egregious. Don't get me wrong. Just like. You know, here's another example of cops doing horrible shit, and like, I know, like, <laughs> I'm not saying anything against it. It's just like I, I wouldn't, um, like, if there isn't enough reason to be angry, right? Well, and I think that's what's happening. Is I mean, the 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 anger is being fanned, you know, like fire. And it's like we see wildfires when they take off, they take off, and that's the scary part because you know, not everybody is gonna say. I'm going to deal with this in a logical, peaceful sense. Like we said, we don't always, we don't all process alike. We don't all deal and cope alike. And for some people, anger is their outlet. I mean, it's it's right. an emotion. Right. And I know, like with me, like you said, I started seeing stuff popping up on my newsfeed. I mean, they had a, a video of a guy that was in the back of a paddy wagon, handcuffed, and the cop opened the paddy wagon, sprayed him in the face with pepper spray, and then slammed the door. Yeah. And it was like I was like, okay. And then I and I like you said, I. I, I was like, okay, no TV. I'm staying off my feed for a while because it, it, it will it will incite you to places even as someone that feels like I'm a rational thinking person that makes you say this. It, it, it angers you into a place where it will take you places you don't want to go. And that's the thing I would just say to anybody, you know, don't allow this to take you to a place that you know is not for you or you should not be because I see that happening and, you know, and, and I think if that happens then, um, I mean, because they already are demonizing you know um these victims um and a lot of what's going on now is just making the demonizing even easier i have some things to say but pretty much everybody covered um pretty much how i felt um about the situation um thank you jeffrey um xavier and um uh derek um but 
I grew up in something similar to to this, like being like every other person. I grew up being harassed by the police. I've also um, did as they, you know, I complied to everything that they told me to do, and then I went back to file a, a, a complaint. And how about the police sergeant with 15 other police officers came to my home, and the guy they banged on my door like they're gonna break it down, and and I had actually called 911 because I was in fear of my life. I mean, I'm just filing a complaint, and here it is, a sergeant with 15 other officers are at my front door, the same ones that were screaming in my face, holding guns and telling me to get down. And I'm just going down the street to my grandmother's home to get changed. And I'm like, dude, I'm just trying to pay the guy for my pizza. I just came down to my grandmother's home just to get changed. And they're cussing me out. My grandmother came outside telling her to get her black ass inside the door. Oh, so God. for me, it's like yeah. when, when they are policing your communities and you file a police report, then they come to your home to harass you a little bit more. I mean, that to, to me, it, to me, it was a certain fear. My dad told me not to do anything. He said, Lonnie, let it go. Um, don't say anything else. I'm just like, Dad, that shit is, it, 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 it's upsetting to me. And a lot of people just keep, a lot of people just kept fanning that shit under the rug until the point that we're at this breaking point mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So I'm so happy that Xavier and all you guys are giving some insight um, about what you should do. So I'm, I'm like really getting a little emotional, but. Well, let me ask you this. What do you. Something, something what do you, got to give it. What do you feel about like the current technology, like um, the people like we were talking about earlier, you know, videotaping some of this misconduct live? Uh, what do you think like the effect of that has been? Is it escalating, you know, situations or de-escalating? Or how do you feel about that? Honestly, for me, I think it's kind of escalating the problem a little bit more because people are already in their emotions, and here it is—you added more kerosene to the fire, and. Um, I just really think that we just um, need to do, as what Xavier said about the MAD group, to, to do things like that. It's nice to protest, but if we're not hitting them where it hurts in their pocket, yeah. shit ain't gonna happen. Yeah. Then all you've done is stand in the middle of the street. Pretty That's much. It. You holding up fucking traffic. There's somebody about to die in the back of the goddamn ambulance, and you sitting here holding up fucking traffic to prove a point. Now, don't get me wrong, I understand, I get what they're doing, but there has to be something that, like, we, I'm, I'm tired of us saying we shall overcome. I'm tired of us singing that fucking song. But that just seems like we always, when something happens to us, we all get together, walk down the goddamn street singing, we shall overcome, and then what, six months later, swept under the goddamn rug, then what, maybe two months later, somebody get killed, and all of a sudden, here it is again, marching down the motherfucking street, we shall fucking overcome. What the fuck are we thinking about? I, anyway, I just think. Yeah. We, well, Lonnie, we let me, let me. More than just let, singing and walking. Lonnie, let me just point out one, one thing. Uh, that you mentioned about technology. And I do agree with you. It is a lot. It is a lot, a lot to look up every once in a while and see video of another black body laying there. But, you know, here, here's but, the flip but, side. But, but, but honestly, but honestly, it's, honestly, for me, I've seen video where white people are getting the same type of treatment, but it's happening more, from what I'm seeing, it's yes. happening more to us than it is to any other ethnic group. I agree so, with you. I'm not saying that white people or any other group of people are not feeling the same things that we're feeling, but... Uh, Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I, 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 I agree with you. All I was going to say is, well, there's two things. First of all, yes, there are white people being harassed by the police, and I think one of the larger differences again is they are walking away from the situation. They have been harassed. They have been pepper sprayed and mistreated. But in which, you know, if it's that or death, I'll choose pepper spray every day. <laughs> um, the other thing is, as this started with Rodney with the Rodney King incident 30 years ago. It wasn't that Rodney King was the first black man to ever get beat on by the police. This was the first time we had unequivocal, unequivocal proof on video that this shit was happening. And that is what has happened now. It's not that, you know, this is not happening every day or every other day. These are just the ones that we've gotten on video. Right. You know? And this is the thing I, I said to a white friend of mine who actually was... Uh, I think maybe a couple years ago, harassed by the police. And I said, do you honestly believe the situation would have been better if you were black? Just saying, like, <laughs> I get that white people get harassed and beat. I'm just saying, for real. Though. Thank you for watching. And to support M3, please like, leave a comment, and share this video. And for more information, please visit mailmediamind.com.